Let's talk about how you can sell your house without paying a buyer broker and what the advantages as well as the disadvantages are. It's a new world where sellers do not have to offer a buyer agency fee. The days where an agent would say the fee is 5% and then split it with a buyer broker, they're gone. This is all thanks to a class action lawsuit and the Department of Justice. They have transformed the industry by making the fee decouple. In other words, make it so that a seller doesn't need to offer buyer agent compensation and in some cases aren't even able to advertise one. Oh, real quick. Hey, it's Chef Chop. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then no, I'm here to help. A homeowner essentially has three options when they decide to sell their house. Will they be willing to pay the entire buyer broker fee when selling the house? Will they only be willing to pay a partial fee or will they not be willing to pay any fee at all? And towards the end, we're actually going to talk about the only thing that really matters to a homeowner. So stay tuned. But let's start with not offering a buyer agency fee. The obvious benefit and the reason as to why someone would do this is to save the two and a half percent. The negative is that we're not offering a buyer agency fee. and That's ultimately going to decrease the amount of buyers interested in your property and hypothetically, thereby the value of your property as well. I'm going to give you my thoughts on this as well as a real life case study as to what actually happened. First, the case study. The property was listed $50,000 below the expected sales price with a 0% commission. Now, a total of 11 offers were received. Eight offers included a commission while three offers did not. The property ended up selling for $80,000 over a listed price and the winning offer did not include a buyer agency commission. My thoughts are that the fee was baked into the pricing of past comps. A buyer that ends up buying a property and having to pay their agent out of the deal will factor that into their selling price. I also believe that in the beginning, as the market has a little more confusion about this new process, there's going to be an arbitrage that will positively affect the seller. How so? Well, buyer, when looking at a house, will be using past comps and the pricing of past sales to come up with their pricing. Multiple offer situations will provide more buyer offer confusion and put potential buyers in situations where they're bidding higher than the, they really needed to. Now, I also believe that a seller needs to be very aggressive with the pricing and list the house at a discount in order to be very successful with not offering a buyer agency fee. Essentially, under listing a house to bring in a lot of traffic that otherwise may not have been as interested because of having to pay their agent out of pocket and allow the market to actually push up that price. One more thought on this model, it will be a lot more successful in a hot seller's market. As the market starts to soften, then you will see a lot less sellers not willing to offer to pay that buyer agency fee. They're gonna start offering it in order to be more competitive in the marketplace. It will be very similar to the rental market. In hot rental markets, you see the landlord make the tenant pay the fee. When vacancies increase, the market softens, then you will see landlords offer to pay that broker fee. So what about paying the buyer broker fee? What are the positives and the negatives of going this route? There's safety in the tradition. There's safety and comfort. This is the old comfortable way of going about real estate. In the end, what paying the buyer broker fee does is increase the buyer pool and thereby buyer demand on the property. Hypothetically, if you increase demand, then the loss of supply and demand would say that you would ultimately get more for your house. I've also heard the argument and am buying it partially that by paying the fee, then you will get a better agent to help manage the transaction from the buyer side. And I can tell you from experience that having a good agent on the other side of the deal could be the difference of a small hiccup completely sidelining and ending a deal or figuring out a solution and working through it. In a slower market, I believe that offering a buyer broker fee will be a huge advantage to the sellers highly motivated to looking to sell their house and having a leg up on their competition. The negative? It's that you're on the hook for two and a half to three percent of the final sales price. I can't really think of too many other negatives other than that one. And then there's the middle ground somewhere. I don't know how I personally feel about this one in the sense that I don't think you really get either of the advantages. So thereby you essentially lose. Another tactic and what I ultimately see becoming the norm is staying open-minded, negotiating any buyer agency fee at the time of the offer because at the end of the day, there is only one thing that matters. I told you that we'd get into this one thing that matters towards the end. Every seller is obsessed with the asking price. They harp on the agent fee, but in the end, the only thing that matters is the net sale proceeds. In other words, how much money is left after you sell the house and pay all the fees because that's all that matters. What ends up in your pocket? 
the amount of money that you could actually take with you to your next endeavor. I'm going to end with this. Does moving a line item from one party to the other really result in a higher net to a seller or a lower price to a buyer? The reason the DOJ wanted to do this was to help reduce the price of houses. But I have seen this play out over and over again over the years with for sale by owners. A seller lists a property to save on the realtor fee. But time and time again, buyers will reflect that fee savings in the offer that they actually present to a seller. In other words, just because the fee isn't there doesn't mean that the seller is just going to give up that money and give it to the buyer in order to lower the price of the house. So yes, you can sell your house without paying a buyer broker. Sellers today have more options than ever when it comes to picking a qualified and experienced agent with many different tiers of a marketing plan. Now, I know personally I have four that range from a seller fee of 1% for our economy plan to our premium 7% plan, but we actually guarantee that a house will sell or will buy it. Options are great. Until recently, we as an industry, we were handcuffed to innovation. Not anymore. It's about choosing what works best for you. Again, it's Jeff Chubb. If you're looking to sell a house in Massachusetts or anywhere else in the country, then it would be a pleasure to help you. I network with hundreds of the top agents in the country who I know will maximize your net sale proceeds while minimizing your marketing time. I'm happy to make an introduction for you at no cost to you, obviously. You can find all my details below, right down there, or you can visit me uh, at youtuberealestateagent.com.